Kaiserreich is a mod that originated in 2005, asking a very simple question. What if Germany won World War I? The mod itself spans three entire games, Hearts of Iron 2, Darkest Hour, and most recently, Hoi 4. The most simple understanding of Kaiserreich can be summarized as, and then the Germans fucked up everything, again, and continues from there. The United Kingdom and France are ruled by syndicalists, which are pretty much just off-brand communism. Russia collapses into a mega-civil war with a white Russian victory in the German Reichsprache is starting to begin its own depression and Asia's, well, Asia's in the 1930s. And of course, all of this is destabilizing the United States, leading to an inevitable Second American Civil War. And that's just the simple bits, but we're not talking about Kaiserreich lore, really. Kaiserreich, oddly enough, actually has an offshoot called Kaiser Cat Cinema, producing artwork for the mod as well as a series of art prints, music, wanting to make a film, comics, and most recently, hosting a poll about making a political TTRPG. Well, KCC by itself is an odd existence, that last part actually piqued my interest quite a bit. What is a political TTRPG? My first thought actually drifted to Sigmata, unfortunately. One that outright states it's a propaganda piece as written by a propagandist. Though I soon thought it's something more one of those odd nation roleplay games, more of a world-building tool than a strict game game. But then it kind of dawned on me. What the hell were they going to do in Kaiserreich? So I got to work penning down a few ideas, well, three. Luckily enough, there was the only thing I could really had to consider was, one, being part of the Kaiserreich universe, and two, being a political TTRPG. Politics at its core is, of course, all about one idea. Who gets what? When? Where? And how? So with these two concepts in mind, here are some ideas. Vignettes of war is the simple concept on paper. Instead of a single story on a small group of individuals, it instead focuses on the lives of a handful of people from session to session in a particular situation. Let's zoom into the Second American Civil War for a bit, as let's be honest here, everyone else does too. Our little problem starts in Paducah, Kentucky, a midway point between the federal government, combined syndicalists of America, and the American Union states. Each of these would like to claim the small city to cut off or keep hold of the federal government's influence in in the Midwest. This is the actual campaign, asking the simple question of who takes Paducah, Kentucky. Now, instead of playing a squad of federal soldiers or a Union Silver Shirt Brigade, it instead is zooming in on, you guessed it, vignettes of individual characters per session. The game itself would have to be relatively light, perhaps just a simple roll and keep with some abstracted attributes and skills, as each character needs to be made quickly per session, one that can easily adapt to whatever situation is preceding it. Keeping in line with our basic requirements, we can draw all characters from technically anywhere and anyone who is relevant to the situation. Let's take an example real fast. The first session has the players taking control of Union State scouts, diving deep into enemy federal territory to not only scout it out, but to find themselves face to face with the CSA trying to do the exact same thing. The question is now asked, who gets what, where, and how? The Union scouts can try to disrupt CSA forces, sneak back a notice, or do any number of things to influence this vignette of the battle. Depending on the outcome, the next session might have the players take control of a CSA squad moving into the outskirts of the city. Say our Union scouts kill the goddamn Cindy's, you're going to be going in completely blind without a clue. But if they didn't, or maybe they even warned them, you might have better information or have bad information just going in. The situation has changed. There would be multiple characters to take control of, of course, all of which influence the, the single battle of Paducah. Even people were nowhere close to the actual city, just making choices or trying to cut deals to get that easy support. One session might have you in Washington, as the staff of beleaguered Kentucky Senator M.M. Logan trying to get support from the local garrisons to reinforce Paducah, or the thick of the fighting as Union commandos, perhaps even just a supply train, a CAS trying to move supplies in, only to get ambushed. Maybe even just a batch of Paducah residents, realizing that there isn't going to be a way out and loading up the family trucks is all they can really do right now. Characters would be fairly expendable, lasting only about a session. But as with many things, without that much time investment of a story investment, the players would be encouraged to mix things up and go 125% as their playstyles is, I don't care if I die, I'm replaceable, but wanting to see how their little part influences the greater story panning out. The vignettes are just small looks at a much larger, more complex picture. 
this is one of those world-building games you see every now and again, taking the players and in turn their roles far outside the traditional one character, but instead in that of a group or larger concepts. But we still need to make this a role-playing game, no? So why not both? Take the role of the inner cabinet of a minor nation in the ensuing years of the Veltkrieg and weather the storm that is quickly coming to claim your ass. One of the major ideas here would be that you're, as a character, you're not strictly worried about your individual stats or abilities, but rather the influence, resources, and means you have of using them. Each player takes control of various important positions, such as Prime Minister, Minister of Foreign Affairs, Economy, Justice, Intelligence, Defense, and just about any other various important positions as an individual can reasonably be expected to hold. From there, play would need to be fairly structured. I picture it being something more token-based, or manipulating various resources, values, and negotiations, or just outright arguing with one another, or actually just using cards to resolve challenges and problems each minister has to deal with. The Minister of Foreign Affairs may be the only link to the outside world for many, but with the Minister of the Economy backing you with finance, a Prime Minister has the final say in all your actions. So God help you all if the Minister of Defense gets involved with all his soldiers. Now, this would be a nightmarish to GM, actually, as the challenges presented would have to be far different than just five goblins in a cave. It would have to be crises needing to be juggled all at once between a group of power players trying their best to make sure that everything actually functions and keep the government afloat while also trying to do their personal objectives. The main thing here would be that each of the major events that would be something more akin to a Hearts of Iron focus, but instead of controlling when and where these focuses are chosen, GM is picking anything they feel like to make your life horribly, horribly miserable. This one would embody the principle of the political RPG, one requiring you to balance a very limited set of resources as you quickly begin to realize that you just don't have enough, needing to condemn one part in favor of another maybe, and perhaps condemn both for a third option? But in this one, there isn't a fun and little simple path guide for you to follow. Do you trust your other cabinet ministers? back in the USA and the Second American Civil War is in full swing. It's a four-way struggle for supremacy as the federal government collapses all around us and the forces of all the various factions take up arms against one another to determine the future of America. You? Well, you're part of the federal 16th Rifle Division. Half your men are taken from other sections of the federal forces and the rest are drafted idiots. Or maybe you're part of the Louisiana Devil Hunters, a full division of militia drafted from the backwoods of the South to fight for the Kingfish himself. Maybe you're a brigade of CSA regulars trying your best to manage the horde of newly drafted volunteers who can barely hold a gun. It'd be a hell of a shock if you were actually part of the Nevada National Guard just moving into the Midwest to protect the PSA's new home. A little bit weird, right? The divided states of America would be a war simulator, but not a grand strategy tactics or heroic deeds of badasses. But the nitty gritty boots in the mud grunts having to push toward an enemy. You'll never have supplies. You'll never have everything you need, but at least you can capture that point over there your few squads and command staff may actually have something to eat today. Uh, but I have a secret about this one. I already wrote it. The Divided States of America was a Hearts of Darkness expansion, officially named Land of the Free, the Divided States of America, it's not Kaiserreich if you squint, was just taking the Second American Civil War and doing everything I just stated. The game uses a modified version of the interlock system, bar some necessary changes and some card mechanics to facilitate some luck and problems. The players take the role of a command staff of either a brigade or platoon of soldiers, fighting in harsh conditions and worse situations as they struggle to find a place in their new world. The original expansion added a few new vehicles, more detailed air and nautical combat situations, and the full talents and gifts system. Boots in Mud proper, the game anyway, actually contains almost everything that was covered in it and a bit more, combined with the full military campaign system, as well as Iron Caskets, which is a game about tankers and their inevitable demise. The link for that book, The Spragazine, is in the description, and you can check it out, and that'd be pretty cool. Slap Kaiserreich over it, and congrats, you have a Kaiserreich game. Now, if I had an art team, some layout, out, guys, maybe an editor and a few lore writers. Well, well, I'll let you put two and two together. And that's that. If you've noticed something, it's that adapting Kaiserreich proper is kind of a fool's errand. A political TTRPG isn't actually going to be about politics, because politics is just the process of who gets what, when, where, and how. It's about the effects of people on the ground and what they're doing. Kaiser Cat Cinema has seemingly placed most of their eggs in the Second American Civil War's basket, and while most everything else is a variety of flags and posters, while Huey Long's Wild Ride has not only a full website dedicated to it, but also 
also a show, show poster and, and the merch. God, the merch. Now, I they have explored other parts of the world, but I have to ask you this. Does Kaiser Reich need an RPG? Or would it be better as just a setting book and just left alone? Some Savage Worlds expansion or something? Personally, I see the potential in it the same way I see the potential in most things. Interesting if executed correctly and mediocre if not. Will Kaiser Reich get an RPG? Who knows? Right now is just a YouTube poll for God's sakes, but people did show a clear interest in it. That by itself has some merit to it at least. Though I will say this, and heed my words, Kaiser Cat Cinema, if this is ever seen by any of you, no one wants a political RPG. If you go any further beyond politics, true to definition of who gets what, where, and how, I'll be the first one to put your head on a pike. My name is Noped and on this was Kaiser Reich and my meandering thoughts about it. If you like what I do here, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. If you have any other ideas of what would make a good Kaiser Reich RPG, or any other Hearts of Iron mod for that matter, feel free to share below. Many thanks to the Plutocrats as always, Godspeed, and good night. Thank you.